Those of us who caught the last stream know that we were just shy of getting into the master rank in the last season. It was just a bit of a weird season. I didn't really push very hard for master rank. And we missed it on stream by literally what two or three games. Uh, we needed two or three more wins and we just didn't pull it out of the bag on time. It is what it is. So we're in the platinum rank at the start of this season. And I see no better opportunity to test some of the other really sort of cool off-brand ideas that I've been cooking up. And this is no exception. Laval Snake Eyes. Now this is pretty awesome. I really, I really like this deck. Uh, basically, the idea is you're abusing the spell card Rekindling. Rekindling allows you to bring back as many fire monsters with 200 defense from your graveyard as possible. No cost, not once per turn, nothing like that. Not only does it apply, of course, to the Laval monsters that we're playing, but uh, Oak and Poplar also have 200 defense. So even this card by itself, if you don't have any of your Laval uh, nonsense, is still a non-once per turn revive two monsters from your graveyard which is fucking sick. So rekindling is awesome. So we're utilizing a, a small Laval engine to take even better advantage of the card. We're gonna hop into solo mode. I'm gonna show off a little combo here of rekindling plus molten conduction field, just to explain some of these extra deck choices. I'm gonna show you a quick replay or two, and then we'll play a live game or two as well. I kinda like that formula that we did in our Monodium video. We're gonna try that a couple more times from here on out. So if you're interested in this style of content, of course, make sure you're subscribed and you like this video to show me that you want to see more of it. And let me know down below what you think of that or if you have any suggestions at all uh but yeah i'm not gonna waste too much time let's get in we're gonna show off a little rekindling and molten conduction field combo all right now before we get into this combo i do want to clarify one thing you are not playing the laval engine as well as rekindling strictly for this two card combo the combo i'm going to show you shows off a lot of the underlying value and sort of the maximizes the value of the laval package so you get to see all of the cards and what they do but by no means should you look at this and think that they're only good if you see them with each other. A uh, Molten Conduction Field being able to fill your graveyard with fire monsters is useful alongside the likes of Flamberge and Oak being able to bring these cards back. Rekindling, of course, just as a non-once per turn, several monster, monster reborn is always going to be amazing as well. So these cards, as well as the Laval cards themselves, are generally useful in their own right. So don't get it confused and think that like it's some sort of obscure combo. But this is these two cards together is like the best way for me to show you what these cards do, right? Uh, we're gonna start off with the multi conduction field. This card basically gets your whole Laval package into the graveyard. And how does it do that? Well, you're using the Hand Maiden as well as any other Laval, either Archer or Lakeside Lady. So you want a Hand Maiden and one of the other two sent into the graveyard. Now, Hand Maiden, when sent to the grave, so long as you have another Laval in grave, will send another Laval monster from deck to graveyard. So you're going to mill another Hand Maiden. This card's not once per turn. So we're essentially going to loop the Hand Maiden to pitch all of the copies of it to the graveyard, as well as lastly, of course, getting our archer into the graveyard. Now that means we have five monsters in our graveyard that have 200 defense, meaning rekindling. Rekindling is just soul charge. Just bringing back five monsters, five. Now, there's a lot of things you can do from this point onwards. You could do a crazy link claim. You could go into a four material Appalosa right now. Uh, you could do whatever the hell you want, right? There's tons and tons and tons of things you can do. What we have decided to do uh, is something a little bit more interesting. You don't have to play it like this, but I think this is pretty fucking cool. We're, we're going to go into the Garden Rose Maiden. Using any of our level, uh, any of our high maidens plus our archer. Going to go into the Maiden, right? And then we're going to use the Lakeside Lady and the Garden Rose Maiden to go into our Crystal Wing, right? And the thing about Crystal Wing is so about, uh, the thing about this later on so let's i'm gonna normal summon ash i'm not gonna use its effect we're gonna pretend that we're using its effect i don't go for the whole snake eye combo right now so you have your ash you do your whole combo blah 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 uh but more importantly like in the middle of that combo you're gonna get access to formula synchron by the way level one tuner very nice so you're gonna get access to your formula synchron uh towards the end of the combo draw a card whatever <laughs> Not, not once per turn, just pointing it out, not once per turn. Um, but the idea is that then you're going to turn your Crystal Wing and your Formula Synchron into a Baron, uh, just like this, later on into your combo, potentially after you use Crystal Wing to stop a Hand Trap, and then you can use the Garden Rose Maiden in your graveyard, banishing it to bring back the Crystal Wing, which again is a soft once per turn monster negate. So basically you're ending with both a Crystal Wing and a Baron, 
on top of your whole snake eye combo. So I just wanted to briefly show that off there. Uh, of course, you're going to weave those organically into your snake eye splays. You're not going to force everything out the way that we just did. That was more for demonstration purposes. But the fact that, again, we can do all of that, the fact that rekindling, again, not once per turn, which is fucking nuts, right? Um, we can just bring these cards back, right? As if anyone gives a shit. Bang, bang, full field. Nuts, right? So that's the idea behind it. Is that going to come up very often in the gameplay? Probably not. It's mostly sort of focusing around the utility of the Laval monsters, of Snake Eyes in general, being able to, to pump the graveyard full of cards, being able to use your rekindling to just soul charge to the field. A lot of uh, utility coming from these cards here, so let's just get into the replays. All right, for clarity's sake, I want it to be known that at the time of this game happening, uh, there were points where we were literally sitting at zero seconds on the clock, right? And I'm going to talk through those stages. I did take a bit longer than I should have in terms of making my decisions, but you, know, you all know me, right? I always I always overthink shit. Uh, but this is going to be up against Branded here. Going to go for Branded Fusion. No hand traps on hand, unfortunately, but we do have a shitload of gas. This whole hand is just gas, which is awesome. Also, also not once per turn. So if they ash this for whatever reason, you can just use a second one, right? It's not once per turn. Going into Lobelion, going to shuffle back for Mirror Jade. Also, they have the Lobelion, of course, in Grave. Going to use Lobelion from Grave, tributing off the Albion, playing it to the field. We're going to show off a little bit of extra utility from the Laval cards that we didn't show off before. Going to set two cards to the field. That's totally fine. Going to pass it back to us. So we're going to draw into Flamberge for turn. Not a great draw, but it's fine. Multi Conduction Field, going to mill uh, our two cards, just like before. Handmaiden, going to mill a Handmaiden. Handmaiden going to mill a Handmaiden, and then our last Handmaiden will send our Archer. Now we're going to use Lakeside Ladies Effect, which actually allows you to banish itself and another Laval to pop a set card. So we force him to use his Branded Banishment early, which is awesome, right? We know that this card's Branded in Red. He doesn't have any Branded in Red targets in Grave right now, so that is totally fine, right? So we force the other one. Branded Banishment's gone. Awesome. Now we can go Diabelle Star. We're going to activate its effect. They're going to go for a pretty early Mirror Jade here, which does present us an opportunity. It is important to note that like this is the Platinum rank, which means that there are maybe not going to be... People aren't always going to make the best possible decisions, but that's okay. Going to grab the Poplar from the deck here. Special to Poplar. Poplar then gets search in our deck for a Field Spell. Going to use the Ground Gunal from the Graveyard to Special Summon out a Despia Monster from Deck or Extra Deck. They're going to go for Paritis. Uh, hoping to stop us from going for lethal damage here, being able to reduce our whole field down to zero, but I've got a plan for that card just fine here. We're going to link off into Link Rebo using the Poplar, so it will reset the Handmaiden to the Spell and Trap card zone. We're going to use Ash now, sending it and the Handmaiden for the Oak. Oak is going to grab back the Banished Handmaiden from earlier on. Oak then going to send itself from Link Rebo to bring out the Flamberge, and I do have a plan. We're going to use the Flamberge. We're going to send Quiratus into the back row. Now, why Quiratus over Mirror Jade? Well... It, right now, I'm, I want to try and put myself in a position where I can get aggressive, right? If I say Mirror Jade back, that's okay, but he can see if his Quiritus then basically until the uh, end of main, which means that at the end of main, my whole field's going to get reduced to zero and I won't be able to put on offensive pressure. This guy cannot use his effect until the end of the next turn. So he's not a huge concern right now, so I decide, fuck it, we're going to push this guy back and then we'll simply get rid of Mirror Jade our own way while maintaining our attack points. He does activate to reduce us to zero here, but that's okay. It's all part of the plan. We're going to drop a Flamberge to summon out another Ash. We've already got a Tuner on field. We're going to use the Flamberge and Grave, summoning out two more from the Grave. Formula Synchron then on summon, going to draw us a card. We're going to draw Ash Blossom, which is pretty good. Baron the Fleur now using the Flamberge. Now we're going to use the effect here, popping the Lobelion because it's got that 3k defense. Going to bring back Flamberge from the graveyard. And again, this is going to look iffy, but trust me, this play is fucking dope, right? So in the IP, going to swing in the Albion, taking it out. We had like six seconds left on the clock. So we're into the end phase, right? So we're going to ash the Albion, or sorry, the Titanic Clad, right? Ash and the Titanic Lad. Remember, Mirror Jade cannot activate its banishment effect until the end of the next turn. We're actually going to use Baron here on Albion the Branded Dragon, which may seem like a bit of an early Baron to many people. And I wouldn't blame you. That does seem like a bit of a preemptive Baron. Going to add back Branded and High Spirits to their hand, but that is A-OK. -okay. In comes the draw phase, and then standby. We're going to bounce the Baron back to the extra deck to bring back the Formula Synchron. So we can use the uh, Field Spell, summoning out the Flamberge, and now we can use Formula Synchron and the Flamberge to go into another Mirror Jade. Not only does that allow... Sorry, into another Baron. Not only does that give Baron back its negate, it also means that IP will have additional materials with which it can conduct its Link Summon. 
So we're going to go for Formula Synchron here. Synchro Summoning into our level 10, our Baron de Fleur. Uh, we're now going to... He's going to summon out Quem. Quem is fine. We're going to use Flamberge and Grave. We're going to summon back two monsters from our graveyard. And again, what is worth noting, super low on time right now. <laughs> bring back the Ash, bring back the Yoke. Ash gets searching. Oak will revive an additional card from the graveyard. Uh, we're not going to trigger anything else right this second. Going to bring back a Lakeside Lady. Going to go for Ash for the Ash for follow-up. And then we're going to go IP, Link 4, into Bow of the Goddess. This, at this moment, we had zero seconds on the clock. So my toggle was off. I turned my toggle off. That was it. That was my turn done. Uh, he is going to tribute off the Albion here for another Bestial Abelion from the graveyard yet again, but he doesn't have another target in deck. He's going to crash the uh, Mirror Jade in here, hopefully trying to clear our board for the end phase, but we don't care because we are immune to destruction here. He's going to go Branded Retribution from the deck, but that's okay. Brandon High Spirits coming back yet again. Free discards all day. That card's pretty damn awesome. Our monster is immune to destruction thanks to IP Masquerina. We're going to draw into Call by the Grave, the perfect top deck for that Branded and Red, by the way. Remember, Branded and Red is there from the first turn. They're going to go Branded Retribution on the Poplar, of all things, which kind of makes sense. Uh, Poplar is a pretty problematic card, and he's removing our ability to effectively use the Ash somewhat because the Poplar not being on field does remove a search from us, but it's not the biggest deal in the world because we already have Sinful Spoils. We're going to send Flamberge to summon the Jet Synchron. We're going to go Flamberge now, summoning out Oak from Grave, as well as the Poplar from Grave. Oak going to summon out a Handmaiden. Now we're going to use Free to link into Promethean Princess uh, of whatever. Apollosa, of course. We still have a 4 material Apollosa on board. We're going to use Apollosa and negate the Quem. Shut that shit down right away. They do have the Branded in Red. We are playing around that somewhat. Uh, at least making you think we're playing around it. We have the answer in hand, though. We're going to go Flamberg, sending uh, Lobelion back to the back row. So that is, again, one last body on board. We're going to go call by to banish the Fallen of Alabaz from his graveyard. So it is not going to come out of the field. And he's not going to conduct a fusion summon. So that's great. Get rid of that shit. Flamberg, send that shit back. Into the battle phase, taking out the Quim, swinging over the Albier, uh, Alibur, <laughs> and then 2k, 27, 24, easy game, right? And there you go. That shows off some of the utility. Again, uh, abusing and looping the Hadmaiden for Grave, a useful level 1 fire monster, uh, tuner especially. So the Lakeside Lady as well, being able to pop back crew cards is nice. Archer, we didn't get to shoot this off, but Archer also has an effect that allows him to revive himself from Graveyard by popping a fire we control. So yeah, a lot of utility from the Laval cards to an extent, but again, the more, more important thing is that it doesn't necessarily hamper the Snake Eyes cards. Make sure your Oak always has a target, and make sure your Flamberge always has an adequate number of targets, and it sets up a pretty incredible rekindling if you happen to draw into it. We didn't in this game, but that's okay. Sometimes you don't. It's important to know that the cards bear value, even if you don't have rekindling, right? Although, it's pretty fucking strong, right? But anyways, next replay. All right, this one's a little bit quicker, so it is here. We're going to go main one activating, of course, Seeker of Sinful Spoils, grabbing a Dia Bell Star from Deck to Hand. If you made it this far into the video, by the way, make sure you leave a like on the video to help you boy get this out to as many people as possible. Going to Dia Bell Star for the original Sinful Spoils, normal summon the Snake Eye Ash, grabbing the Poplar. This is pretty standard Snake Eye stuff here. Everybody knows this combo. Some people are probably sick of it by now, given how powerful the deck is. Going to play Flamberge into the back row. We're going to go Link Karibo here. Uh, the combo is fairly straightforward from this point onwards. We're going to send these two for our Oak. Unfortunately, we had Oak in hand. Uh, we're going to go Sinful Spoil Sailor, sending the Link Rebo. Synchro Summon here into Savage Dragon. So again, we did it. The combo is a little bit weird how we did it, but we did it that way so that we could set up a Borrowed Savage Dragon using the Link Rebo and Grave. But unfortunately, he had the Magnum up. Now, we are going to deny the Magnum up by tributing off the Jet Synchron on our field, but it is still pretty annoying that we extend it into the Boro Load just to have it stopped by a Magnum anyway. So, it is what it is, though. We're going to use Oak. We're going to send it and Flamberge to summon out another Flamberge from our deck. Now, we're going to use the Flamberge Engrave, summoning out a Handmaiden as well as a Poplar. We're going to link two into IP Mascarina, and we're pretty much just going to make up for the lost ground that we had just a moment ago. We're going to go Princess. Flamberge then resets the IP that we just used as material to the field. Princess then going to bring back an Oak to the field. We're going to use these two for the Ambla Wheel. Again, the Borolo Tavish Dragon not doing anything on board anymore. Pitching a card from hand to summon the Jet Synchron. So now we can win the Formula Synchron. And we're going to use the Formula. Drawing into Molten Conduction Field. We're going to pitch some cards to the graveyard. Again, just filling up the graveyard as much as we can. Sending an Archer. Now drawing an additional card that we've milled out our deck pretty well. We're going to draw into another Wanted, unfortunately. 
Not the greatest draw in the world, but it's definitely some follow-up at the very least. Not going into, uh, by the way, very important, not going into the Baron on our turn, making sure we go, go into our opponent's turn for the IP Masquerina first, as well as getting additional usage out of the Flamberge so we can utilize its effect again. Formula Synchron, very important for that reason. Going Magnum out to try and target the Abel Star in our graveyard, summon itself out to the field. Again, if we have the out, we can add it to hand thanks to us drawing the wanted, stopping Magnumit yet again. Gonna use the IP Masquerina then from the back row, main one. Bestial Abelion then gonna activate, sending itself to the graveyard. We're gonna change to that our Formula Synchron. Now we're gonna Synchro summon using Formula Synchron and our Flamberge into the Burn de Fleur, of course. Uh, Lebelion's gonna grab himself a Drissorm. Drissorm's pretty annoying, but it's a-okay. We're gonna go for the Flamberge. They're gonna chain Drissorm to try and get our Link Karibu from the graveyard. I'm gonna use Baron. We're gonna negate and destroy that Drissorm. It is a particularly problematic card because if he summons it out to the field and then tributes it for Lebelion, he's gonna have, like, removal and stuff, and it just gets awkward, right? I'd rather just pop it, get rid of it. Summon out two from Grave. We're gonna use Ash to search our deck. Oak then gonna bring back our Banished Jet Synchron, allowing us to recycle it next turn, which is very useful. Gonna grab, of course, the Poplar. Poplar does miss its proc, unfortunately, but that's okay. We still get that four material Apollosa, plus Princess and Grave and a Baron. Well, Baron's already used this negate, but you know what I mean. They're gonna go Reum Heart here from hand. We're gonna use Apollosa to negate the Reum Heart, of course. Uh, they're gonna go for Siege the Fleur, which was pretty damn interesting. Uh, of course, we're dead. We're not going to let that happen, obviously, right? We're going to negate that shit with Apollosa. And I'm pretty sure our opponent, uh, they go Primitive Planet Reich Phobia, grabbing Visa Starfrost from deck to hand, but they couldn't do very much else with it. Bit of a weird sort of Bestial Monodium deck. It was pretty cool in Fury. I checked out their list afterwards. But, um, it just wasn't enough on this occasion. Too many negates. What do you want me to say? Uh... Especially with the Princess and Grave there. Princess and Grave not only disrupts Monodium quite heavily by removing... Basically, Monodium relies on having a certain amount of resources arranged a certain way. And Princess being able to just snipe a card at once is, is just so detrimental to that deck. But yeah, five negates plus the Princess and Grave. What more do you want? And what kind of deck profile would this be without at least one live game? So let's give it a shot. We are, of course, going to go first here. We're in Platinum 3. It took me like 30 minutes, like 40 minutes to get to, to Platinum 3. We're pl we're breezing through the Platinum rank. We're going to be in Diamond in like two days. So <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, this sounds playable. This is okay. So we're going to go multi-conduction field off the rip. Might need like an Ash or something like that. That'd be pretty neat if it did. But um, it might not. Who knows? Molten Conduction Field. Are you going to, like, stop this? No, he's not. We're going to mill then these two. If he's playing Lab, that Laval Lickside Lady, unironically popping back row, could be pretty damn useful. He's got something he can use. I don't like that he's got something he can use. <laughs> he better fucking stop that shit. Knock that shit in the head. Uh, I don't want any of that. All right, we're just, again, filling up the graveyard as much as we can. Let's get Millen. Right, now we got four fire monsters in grave. We are going to go for Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. Ah. Uh, I do think this is worth it. I do. I do think this is worth it. I think he's playing Lab. I think he's playing something like that. I do honestly think he's playing. Of course, he could just be baiting me with the sleeves, and I know that. But I don't know. I think he is playing Lab. So I think, uh, I think this is going to be... I think that's worth it. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll soon find out. I'm uh, going to go for Dia Bellstar from our uh, deck. I think I'm going to keep the Handmaiden in hand. We're going to drop the, uh, the Maxi. Maxi no longer being playable anyways. So we're going to keep the Handmaiden in hand potentially as a normal summon. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Dia Bellstar going to grab us a card, setting it directly to the field. So if he does have something, it's not Axe Blossom. Shit. Is that a furniture piece? Could be furniture. Could be furniture. All right. That's A-OK. -okay. We're going to go for the original Sinful Spoils then. It could it could be an Imperm. We might be saving it for the likes of a, of a Snake Eyes Ash. Or it could be an Ash Blossom. I think it's furniture. I do think it's probably furniture. If I'm being honest, I would imagine it is. We're going to go Snake Eye Ash. What have you got for me? 
Nothing. All right. Yeah, it has to be furniture, right? If it was you 100% of the time, uh, impern the ash, there's no way that this is a playable card. There's no way. It's, it's, it's simply not playable. All right, going to go for the poplar. Poplar, get popping. Going to grab us a field spell. Loving it. We could try to draw ourselves a little rekindling. Let's fin the deck out first. Let's get finning the deck. We're going to play our temple. Temple going to play a flamberge onto the board. Love to see it. Now we're going to link off our poplar here. Yes, sir. Going into Link Aribo. Having the extra tuners in Grave, like the, the handmaidens for the likes of Oak, is pretty is pretty awesome. It just means that you've got actual like fire monsters that hold additional utility from the graveyard, not just like fire monsters for the sake of being fire monsters, right? You've got tuners, you get a mix of cards. DD Crow! On the handmaiden? Yeah, I mean I I mean I I mean I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would have did that. Damn. That was a ballsy move. Okay, so... DD Crow... I, mean, I guess I just do this, right? I mean, it, it's no difference. I just send you and the Link Karibu to Grieve. I could even have sent Flamberge, honestly. And just, like, sent it early. It would have, it would have basically the same impact. We activate this, we're gonna bring back the probably the banished Lakeside Lady. Because all of none of you fuckers can use your effects anymore. See, I'll just grab my banished Lakeside Lady. Special summon right here. Hell yeah. Gonna go for the Oak Knight. We're gonna drop the Oak and the Flamberge. We're gonna summon a Flamberge right here. All right, Flamberge and Grave then will activate. Gonna grab ourselves. Already got a tuner on deck, so I guess we just grab any of these guys, right? Doesn't really matter which ones we grab. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're going to keep this nice and simple then. Uh, if we'd like to go formula, I would definitely like to go formula. So... Um, let's go... Okay. I'm trying to think if I could go Sprite Elf and Formula Synchron. You know what I mean? So if I go... Right, I normal. I think I'm going to end up normal summoning you, right? So we go you two in the formula, put formula over here. Then we've got two monsters on board. Uh, you two into... IP, IP, and formula into princess, princess? No, 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 no. Formula, no, that doesn't work. I think we're an extender shy. I think we're one shy. Ah, uh, maybe not actually. Let's normal summon and find out. I actually don't think we are. I think we'll be fine. That may be a nib he's holding on to, and if it is, then fuck me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that's, just, just, that's just life at that point. <laughs> that's just life at that point. <laughs> draw us a little card. What are we going to draw? I would like a hand trap. I would like a hand trap. That's a good draw. I'll take it. That is a hell of a draw. So we could go... Elf? No. No, no, no we can't go Elf now, because then we can't go for Princess. So I need to use you two for Mascarina. Yeah, I think this works. I think this is fine. Yeah, you two for Mascarina. That's okay. Then Mascarina and Flamberge. Yeah, into the princess. Yup, yup, yup. This would this would be when you nib. This would be the perfect nib. I think it's furniture though. I do. 
I do think, I genuinely do still think it's furniture. Okay, so now we go Princess. Uh, we bring back the Flamberge. Yeah, no, this works out. This works out. I don't know. I just pause. I don't know. I Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I like pause and, and confuse myself on what's supposed to be the play. But um, no, this is definitely it. We're going to go Flamberge then. Activate. We're going to play IP right here. Then we use these two for Sprite Elf. There we are. And then Elf brings back Formula. And Raguchi. It's just that easy. Alright, now we have a couple of extra cards here. We're going to play Wanted. If we can draw, <laughs> we draw into something else, that'd be pretty awesome. So sh shuffle back Sinful Spoils. Draw Multi Conduction Field. Dead card, unfortunately, now because we've already played all of our Laval stuff. But I think that's... I think I don't think that matters. I don't think it matters. <laughs> I knew it was fucking furniture. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. That's so fine. This is so fine. This literally doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. Yeah, you said big welcome. I've got Ash, boy. I, I don't give a shit. Um, I've got a monster in the field. Oh, oh I can... I mean, I guess I could just summon Mass Green and Nye, I guess. Sure. <laughs> sure. It's just one last... Uh, that's just one last chain for me. Like, it's one last thing for me to worry about. All right, we got IP. Love and life. So what we basically just need... All we're really waiting on now, then, is... Me and Fee is for Formula. All right, go Formula Synchron. Now we're gonna go formula plus Lamberge. Um, what was the uh, what was the chain link order for these? I know there's like a very specific chain link order. Um, so Flamberge, of course, activating. Big welcome. That's that's so fine. I literally don't care. <laughs> that is the freest ash in the world. There you go. All right. Awesome. <laughs> And that's it. All right, let's get another look at the deck list. And there you go. Showing off the value of having all of those additional level one tuners and such in Grave. Uh, having them in Grave as well helps you play through certain types of interruption, helps you loop in certain ways. The rekindling is fucking awesome. Molten Conduction Field is pretty dope. Uh, the one effect that you're not going to use super often, but you can definitely use is Laval Archer's effect to bring itself back from Graveyard, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's primarily here just as a level 4 non-tuner. If I wasn't playing him or like the synchro lanes, I would probably just play a second Lakeside Lady, if I'm being honest. Because again, not once per turn. This card is not once per turn. So if I wasn't playing the uh, Garden Rose Crystal Wing stuff, I would just cut Archer and I would just play a second Lakeside Lady. So if, if you don't want to play the uh, Crystal Wing or, or Garden Rose, that's, that's an idea for you. If you want to play Laval but don't want to play that, uh, other than that, again, the deck is generally pretty damn awesome. Again, these cards fit the theme of the deck super well, so they don't really even feel too bad to open up in hand. Uh, Archer gives you an additional normal summon if you have it in hand as well, which is fucking awesome. Like, Lakeside Lady is a really good back removal. Just the whole deck feels nice, man. So if you want a, a more interesting way of playing uh, Snake Eyes rather than just playing Impure, playing one of the more common variants, this is going to be a pretty fun way of doing it. So if you got this far into the video, make sure you, of course, like it and subscribe if you did actually enjoy watching. If you didn't enjoy watching, I don't know why you're still here, but if you are, may as well hit the button anyway, right? It's not going to bite, I promise. Apart from that one guy, apparently. Uh, but yes, that's pretty much it. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.